Tonight, we're going to take a brief look at the Rossum Electro Music Control Forge module. To call this thing a module would be an understatement. To call this thing the Swiss Army Knife of Control Voltage and Gate would be an understatement. This thing is incredibly featured, versatile, and complicated. In fact, it's so complicated that the manual that they're sending out to their customers with the module is this big. Oh, f me. So let's just start off using the Control Forge as a sequencer and then seeing where we could go from there very quickly. Okay, and if I want to multiply the time. Alright, so going into program mode. All of these notes are absolute, but I can also make them relative uh, to the note previous. So you could kind of just go out of control with melodies. So the first note's coming from CV3, as you can see here. I'm going to change that to this. And let's make five. Let's see, find random. Okay, so five will be random. We'll turn that level all the way up. this one to okay so now we could also change the timing of three <laughs> make it really long let's get the release And as you can see, it's feeding uh, feeding my life forms a gate and CV for the uh, melody. And so, of course, any of these CV outputs can be used with uh, anything you want to use them with. So now let's play with the unique ability to go from absolute to relative. And now if we go with the first uh with the first part of the sequence, I'm going to make that have a random. You could also select the type of random you want, if you want it linear random or Gaussian. So now it's just kind of writing itself at this point. And if I put that through a quantizer, which I don't even have to because you could actually, you could give these uh, relative notes within a chromatic scale, not just voltages. So we have the maths module sending out just a uh, looping falling uh, voltage or envelope rather. And now we're going to take, we're just going to, and that's going to the VCO of the oscillator. We're going to take that out. We're going to put in the CV1 of the control forge. And then we're going to pop that right back into the VCO. So... Right now, the Control Forge is acting as a quantizer, but not only is it acting as a quantizer, it's acting as a random, a randomized quantizer that's working relative to the previous control voltage signal it's getting from the maths. 
crazy. This one's fun. I have the gate of the Mother 32 uh, going into a malt and then coming out, going in here, sort of giving this some uh, tempo. And then I have uh, the notes of the Mother 32, whatever note I'm pressing, so I could change it. And uh, that's going into the uh, CV1. So how we have this working is the first note if we and then the you're hearing the rings uh, module so what we're he hearing here is uh so this one cv1 the rest are just dc delays but as you can see they're all relative to that first note but that note is absolute and that note is again divided or divided that note is decided by cv1 uh so let's give it a kick drum which is basically the clock divided by two Is my chords. And we could also change the time uh, very easily, just with the data knob here. So yeah, when I get it right in the right place, it swings. Oh hi, I'm a sine wave, and this is an audio rate. The audio rate's gonna affect the sine wave. This is really slow though, this is just like a sequence. Pretty boring. Let's speed it up a bit though. Do that with your VST. No, but seriously, this is, uh, of course, the timing here is completely controllable by CV as well. So you can actually have another sequencer sequencing the audio rate going into the oscillator and uh, affecting that if you were so inclined. And right now, while not the prettiest sounding thing in the world, we have every sixth uh, clock tick triggering this sequence and then uh, I can also have it trigger my effects and that's uh, just on a divider So truth be told, I haven't even scratched the surface of what this thing's capable of, and if you've watched it thus far, you're probably already ordering one. But now I have some cons for you. First of all, you have to ask yourself, is this something I want in my modular workflow? You're patching cables here and there, you know where everything is, you're kind of doing that, and then all of a sudden you have this little screen, and you have these little knobs, and you have to like press a knob once or twice, press a button twice or three times to get a different uh, thing on the menu. Uh, you have to go through the sequences. It's not all that intuitive, but it's about as intuitive as you could get for something like that. But it's really kind of the opposite of what modular is, and it kind of reminds me of an Octatrack, where I'll have a bunch of things wired up, and I have this very like musical sense of what's going on, and then I get to the Octatrack, and I'm menu diving, and I'm not having fun anymore. I kind of just get lost in that menu diving, and you know, I end up having to look for the manual or something like that. I wish more than anything that they had a USB port in the front or back of it, and an editor whether it be some stupid thing for the iPad or whether it be on the PC it would be incredible to just have it all in one big screen and be able to make presets that way because making presets is really where 
uh, this thing becomes a pain in the butt and it's kind of hard to work with. That being said, you saw what this thing can do. And for $500, which is a little steep, you're still getting a quantizer, a uh, LFO generator, a really crazy sequencer, a sample and hold, a uh, trigger, all sorts of stuff. And it, it's actually, it adds up and it's quite a value. In my opinion, if you have a large Euro rack system, this is a must have and you're probably already on your way to ordering one. If you have a small one, uh, I would say three rows or less, maybe you might wanna start with a Make Noise Maths if you don't have one already, because this is basically a digital workstation version of a Make Noise Maths, if that makes any sense, uh, with a lot more capabilities. But take it as you will, it's an awesome module, but I do have some problems with the interface. I just really wish that I had an editor for it. Thank you for watching. It's my pleasure to do these reviews. And if you like what you saw, subscribe to the channel.